Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, the internet's busiest music nerd. And when some people are faced with a difficult task, they turn to, I don't know, substances, they drink, they smoke, uh, or just indulge in some other kind of stress reliever, but I have always wholeheartedly believed in the power of prayer. Our Lord, who art in the trap, hallowed be thy pipe. Thy, thy keys, keys will come, thy deals be done, be on the, the block as it is on the street. street. Please and please forgive us for letting, us for letting it go, it go as we forgive those who let it go against, against us. And give, give us this day our, our daily dump dump, dump, dump and deliver us from the cocaine, cocaine castle. castle ASAP. Put in work! Ah, <sighs> and now that my soul feels cleansed, let's review the new Drake album. Nothing was the same. Drake is a Toronto rapper, singer, and songwriter, and this is his third full-length commercial album. Though there were some tracks on his earlier mixtapes that I dug, I couldn't really stand much of the songs on his debut album, to be completely honest. However, since then, when he went on to his sophomore album, I think he kind of cleared the air of a little bit of the melodrama that I think surrounded his tracks, and maybe livened up the emotions a bit to the point where they felt tangible and real and maybe something that I could actually sympathize with. On top of that, I think he cleaned up his singing a little bit, and I think his sophomore LP that I reviewed a few years ago was instrumentally ambitious as well, featuring a lot of atmospheric sounds and textures, something that kind of reminded me a lot of The Weeknd, an artist that Dre collaborated with on that album as well, and a person I'm sure was influencing him a lot of the time, instrumentally and, and emotionally. It just seemed like he was headed into territory that was a lot more introspective, sad, and emotional than most rappers are willing to go. And what has Drake received so far for all of this sort of emotional trailblazing that he's done on all of his albums? Well, uh, a very polarizing reception in the hip-hop community. With each Drake release, I find it harder and harder to pick a side on the sort of love or hate bandwagon. You could really love and, and appreciate Drake's music, but then that kind of means accepting really how sappy it is sometimes. Not only that, but sometimes I feel like Drake is being just as sneaky, bitter, and manipulative as the worst boy or girlfriend you've ever had with his intentions behind writing some of these heartbroken or, or love-struck songs. On the opposite end of the spectrum, you have haters who very shallowly bust on him and make fun of him for not living up to the incredibly masculine image that is sort of a standard in hip-hop music. While there are some Drake songs that I don't really enjoy, at all. I do kind of see the music he's been making and, and sort of his place in hip-hop as being kind of necessary to this sea change that's going on right now, having to do with how rappers should dress and act and how emotional they can be. And another thing you can kind of take seriously with Drake is when he's rapping about his status and, and what he's doing right now in his career, because he is kind of financially and, and record sales-wise at the top of his game. But Drake is a guy that seems simultaneously really connected to his own personal life and is great at telling you stories about it and, and really painting a vivid picture. However, he has a hard time connecting his life and what's happening in it to the outside world in a way that doesn't make you cringe. Take the track started from the bottom on this LP, one of the tracks that dropped early from this album. Now, after this track dropped, a lot of people actually doubted that Drake started from the bottom, given his suburban upbringing and the fact that he was an actor on Degrassi. And while I doubt that Drake was swimming in gold like Scrooge McDuck, I still don't really see that as starting from the bottom. Plus, I feel like in this same track, Drake uses borrowing his uncle's car as proof that he struggled or had a hard time or started with little to nothing. Honestly, Drake just needs to leave the struggle angle alone because he does so many other things well. When it comes to talking about your past life, there are other rappers that have grittier, harder, more awe-inspiring stories. But it's not really the background of this track that's so kind of offensive and, and somewhat underwhelming. It's really the chorus and the bars and, and the beat, too. The instrumental on this thing is trap influence 
influence, maybe a little bit of club groove to the kick drums, and it is just so bare bones and uninteresting. You've got these half-hearted choruses that are apathetically recited, verses that feature bars that are just incredibly unquotable, and even when Drake slips into the chorus on this track, there's not even really a significant alteration in the instrumental. It's just really an effortless song for Drake, in my opinion. Even his flow on this track seems incredibly half-assed. He's spitting at a speed and a pace on this song that makes ASAP Rocky look like Twista. And while I didn't really think this track was terrible when it initially dropped, Listening to it in the context of all the songs on this album, it just kind of seems like a forgettable footnote. And the thing is, this is usually the number one problem with all of Drake's records. For every one worthwhile song or single he makes, he also produces an awful one, and a forgettable one. However, I think that Drake can continue to dominate the mainstream as long as he still releases some hot singles that are worthwhile and infectious on his albums. However, I don't really think that happens here. On Drake's last LP, you had Marvin's Room, you had Headlines, you had the bonus track, The Motto, which were all just quote city, YOLO, but the singles on this LP are just lackluster. I mean, All Me with 2 Chains, a bonus track on here is just not that interesting. You have 5AM in Toronto, which wasn't bad, but does not appear on here at all, not even as a bonus track. And then you have Hold On, We're Going Home, which is like this smooth, synthetic, grooving R&B pop tune that seems pretty nice, feels like a combination of some old school Michael Jackson combined with like M83. It's got a great beat, a sweet melody, as well as a lot of themes of loving and commitment in the lyrics. But at the end of the day, I feel like this song has just lost potential. Lyrically, Drake is incredibly sparse. Again, we have another half-hearted chorus where the instrumental doesn't even change up or explode or create any kind of sensation of excitement that would make this song worth repeating. And then you have lyrics on here that just make me like you're a good girl and you know it. I know exactly who you could be. It's like he's trying to get into the head of this girl telling her, you know, you should be this, you could be that. Wouldn't it be so much nicer? With the promise of affection and acceptance coming afterward. Thankfully, there are some deeper cuts on this album that are actually enjoyable and show promise. The opener on here, Tuscan Leather, is a pretty nice start to the album. There are some trap beats in this instrumental, as well as some very chipmunk, soulful vocals. And there's some interesting beat changes on this thing, too. From the trap instrumental, you go to this boom bap groove, and then to some very beautiful synthesizers on the tail end of this thing. Lyrically, Drake is aggressive, he's convincing, he's passionate, he's great at painting a vivid picture of his life in a close proximity. That's really when he's at his best, but I feel like maybe he makes an overstep a little bit when he asks the listener 10 years from now, will see who's here. And while I kind of wonder if Drake is going to be around still being as successful as he is 10 years from now, I potentially look forward to such a thing because at least I know I'm dealing with a guy who kind of has the long term in mind and is willing to change with the times in order to continue making music that will entertain people. The next track on here, Furthest Thing, another song on here that I think is worthwhile. Drake kind of does that rap singing dichotomy that Drake fans love to love and Drake haters love love to hate. Of course, the lyrics are an ode to a relationship, an ode to love, an ode to Drake's lack of perfection, and getting back together. All tropes and, and themes we've heard from Drake before just kind of peppered in are some newer sort of updates about what Drake is doing now. I really love the very hard-hitting beat change up toward the last third of this track. Really captivating. And Drake sounds great. Drops a killer verse, too. Honestly, I love listening to Drake when he comes through with those triumphant moments like, you know, he's at the top of the podium, he's got the trophy high above his head, yeah! But still, even in those moments, Drizzy drops lines that make me dizzy because my eyes are constantly rolling. Like when he puts on his tough face and threatens other rappers with violence via his bodyguard. After this, we have the track Wu-Tang Forever, which kind of takes the same angle as Girls Like Beyonce, where Drake basically nabs a lyric or a reference or a chorus from another popular artist, titles the track after them, and then hope that the provocative reference or title will get people to check this track out and buzz about it on the internet. And of course, this song is not really about Wu-Tang at all. It's about 
a relationship. Again, we have another sparse, very atmospheric instrumental here that doesn't come off that strong melodically, just a lot of ethereal tones along with Drake rapping and, and singing. And I feel like on this song, again, Drake favors sudden beat changes and just sparseness and, and vastness and wanderingness over just delivering a concise, catchy, memorable song. You have this Wu-Tang sample and this Wu-Tang chorus being repeated and carried through onto the next track, Own It. The song actually kind of feels like an extension of this track, Wu-Tang Forever. And I gotta say that these two tracks while they're not anything terrible, they're not anything exciting either. I can't really say anything that Drake is doing on these songs is, is offensive because a lot of it is stuff we've come to expect at this point. It's not even annoying anymore. It's just boring. The only difference here is that Drake is rapping over slightly different production on this album. And I have no idea what brought the instrumental shift that nothing was the same features. Drake is all over some incredibly nutty trap beats that are just not flattering for him at all. And I know Drake has hopped onto stuff that features some trap influence before, take the track Headlines for example, but those songs at least had some kind of pop sensibility to them. Take the song Worst Behavior for example, terrible track, really awful, just like nails on a chalkboard instrumental and Drake's bars are just weak as hell and his flow is just not that memorable either. The only standout part of the track was the m m Mace ripoff on the third verse where just line for line he's just kind of referencing Mace. To see then there's the track The Language, which essentially kind of sounds like a future song, sans the auto-tune, and the lyrics on here get even more ridiculous with fuck going platinum, I look at my wrist and it's already platinum. He really kind of pulled one from the Trinidad James lyric book on that one. Early on in his career when Drake was getting hot and sort of of really building a buzz for himself. He seemed new, he seemed refreshing, he seemed versatile, he seemed kind of unpredictable, like you just didn't know where this guy was gonna go. He was so successful at riding in this lane that he kind of carved out for himself. But there was sort of this assumption and this belief among fans and critics that, you know, he could really go anywhere from here. And I think what Nothing Was The Same highlights exactly is that Drake really can't go anywhere from here. Not unless he does some soul searching and a major overhaul of his sound and style. Because the tracks on here that sound the best are the ones that feel like, well, this is the kind of Drake that we've come to know and love. Like the track From Time, which has another spacious instrumental and some beautiful pianos, beautiful vocals from Gene. <laughs> And the track is essentially Drake kind of sitting down and, and having a heart-to-heart -heart with his parents, talking about this rocky relationship that he's in the midst of right now, and debating whether or not he should get back with this person, chase her down. It's just a really heartfelt and, and, and tasteful take on this relationship orientation Drake's songs usually take. Then there's the song Too Much with Sampha, which is another beautiful track. Now I know there are a lot of moments on here that I'd mentioned that I didn't like, but I gotta say the worst track hands down, on this album, 305 My City. I would actually put it in the running for the top five worst Drake songs ever. The beat is so out there and experimental that it feels like it would be more fitting for an artist like Little Ugly Man. I'm not pronouncing it like that, shut up. You've got this auto-tuned R&B vocal, some reversed eerie tones that are sampled throughout this thing too, chopped and screwed vocals, trap hi-hats. It just feels a lot like Yeezus actually, an incredibly unrewarding experiment. And the finisher on here, Pound Cake with Jay-Z, we have just another atmospheric instrumental that all of them really blend together by the end of this album, to be completely honest. And it just feels like it fits in with the trend of the rest of this LP. It is just not trying that hard. Even Jay-Z isn't trying that hard. There are some decent bars in his verses, but it feels like sometimes, just like on Magna Carta Holy Grail, he just tosses a bunch of crappy filler in there by repeating cake, 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 cake. Cake. Whereas, you know, a younger Jay-Z would have stopped and said, hey, you know what? All that space we're wasting right here might want to say something interesting there. Overall, gotta say this album a lot less interesting, a lot less entertaining than Take Care. Take Care, even though I didn't love the LP, it left me excited and looking forward to where Drake would go next. And this album has me in the exact opposite realm. It's not an awful album, but it's filled with potholes and just 
boring moments. And while I think Drake is, is a worthwhile lyricist when it comes to just painting a picture of a tattered romance, I feel like he preoccupies himself way, way, way too much with trying to be something more than that or appeal to rappers or appeal to hip hop heads in a way that is more aggressive so that they take him seriously in kind of a masculine light. Take the constant Wu-Tang references throughout this album. Album. While I'm sure that Drake likes some Wu-Tang, while I know that he appreciates at least some underground hip-hop, I don't really see him making these references interestingly or tastefully. It just seems like Drake's insecurity is driving him to make all of these experimental tracks, all of these more aggressive tracks where he just constantly sounds silly. I'm feeling a light five on this album, Transition. But if you've given this Drake album a listen, what did you think of it? Did you love it? Hate it? Why? What do you think I should review next? And that's it. Drake, nothing was the same forever.